been there and I see how they treat those who go rogue like Mr. Trump does in order to do the right thing. You want to know proof of that? Even today, the GOP machine, they're attacking their own front runner and his base of dynamic, diverse, very patriotic supporters. They're attacking you because they can't afford for the status quo to go. Otherwise, the gravy train, it stops and they can't keep slurping from it. Not if things change the way that Mr. Trump and all of we know needs to change. He, he is the candidate that has the power and is in the position to bust that up and to make those changes that many of our own candidates that we work so hard to get elected and then we send them to D.C. that they promise to do, but then they get to D.C. and they don't even try to do it because they're all beholden to one another. That's the beauty of Trump's candidacy. The way that he goes rogue, we can trust then that things are going to be different when he's elected. Now, it's funny to be here in Oklahoma, here the land of red dirt, you know, with your red bud trees. And here we got a red head from the big red apple running for president. And yet, the GOP machine, all of a sudden, they're saying, we're not red enough. We're not conservative enough. And I say, what in the world do they know about conservatism? Is it conservative to hand Barack Obama a blank check every year to fund Obamacare and Planned Parenthood? And to keep those borders open so that illegal immigrants compete for our jobs? Is it conservative to watch these safety nets turn into hammocks for people, many who just choose not to work? Is it conservative to allow, again, illegal immigration to produce millions of new future Democrat voters? That's not conservative. And is it conservative to bequeath our children trillions in new debt, trillions that they'll never be able to pay off? And is it conservative to not fight back for our solvency and our sovereignty? They now are concerned about ideological purity? Since when we're not red enough? Well, not every conservative has had the guts to talk about the real issues that are needing to be discussed and debated. Our candidate is ballsy enough to get out there and put those issues on the table, the issues that a lot of other candidates have wanted to duck and run from. Donald Trump, he's talked about the issues that matter, the issues that you and I talk about and are concerned about, whereas there are some others who, nope, instead of wanting to talk about the tough issues, they wear political correctness like a suicide vest. It's so important that these big issues are finally debated, and that's another refreshing thing about this candidacy because this election it's not just your basic ABCs, anybody but Clinton. Not this time, it's even more than that. When we're talking about a nation without borders, a bankrupt federal government, no more Reagan-esque power through strength, then we're talking about our very existence here, friends. So they who say, oh, but now all of a sudden this base of support, well, they sound angry. I say, doggone right, we're angry, and justifiably so. They're telling us we need to just chill. And I say, they're stomping on our neck, and they're telling us just chill. No, we won't chill. In fact, it's time to drill, baby, drill down on what's going on and hold them accountable. Are you ready to elect someone with the willingness and the ability to make that change that we need to change out that establishment 
and put you back in charge to take back our country, Oklahoma. Are you ready to take back our country? Well, our candidate is a leader. He has spent his life truly there, even though, yeah, he's a multi-billionaire, and not that there's anything wrong with that, a multi-billionaire, but self-made success, so we don't envy that success. In fact, we root him on, because he roots us on. He says to us, he says, I've worked very, very hard, and I've been successful, hugely successful, he says, and he says, and I want you to be successful, too. So we root him on because he's the proponent of equal opportunity to work. And where but Oklahoma, would you guys appreciate that more with your state motto, knowing that work conquers all, he will put you back to work. He has spent his life looking up and being optimistic and building big things big things that touch the sky, infrastructure that puts people to work. He has spent his life building up this success. So his power, when he's in D.C., it's not going to come off of opium, being high off opium, other people's money. That opium that other dopes in Washington sure get high off because they take it from you and then they distribute that other people's money. That's not Trump. Trump's, his power, if you will, his passion is the fabric of America. It is work ethic and dreams and drive and faith in the Almighty, and that is America. Are you ready to share in that again, Oklahoma? The unifying values that he has and that he'll share more about with you all, his unifying values. Well, they reach from big cities and tiny towns, from big mountain states to the Big Apple and the big beautiful heartland in between. He finally is the candidate that we can count on to be the president for all Americans and not divide and not race bait and not think that because you live in one zip code or you are of one color or you are of one economic class that you're any different than any other American. He is for equality. I want you. I want you knowing that the only thing standing in between you and hearing from the next president of the United States is me, so I'll get out of your way. But I want you, I want you to try to picture this, Oklahoma, exactly one year from today. Former President Barack Obama, former. He's going to be packing up the selfie sticks and packing up the teleprompters and the Greek columns and all that hopey changey stuff. And he's going to head back to Chicago where he can look for some community to organize again. But from there, he'll finally be able to also look up. And when he looks up over his head, he's going to see that shining, towering Trump Tower. Because yes, Barack, Trump built that. And that says a lot about our next candidate, who will be the next president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. God bless you, Oklahoma. God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much.
Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. These are great people, really great.